me know if you guys like this system or not. I'm new to GoToWebinar. I don't really like it so far. I'm just going to be honest. Um, actually, I hate it. So I don't, I don't like the way that it's only kind of a questionnaire on the right-hand side. But um, do you guys see on the right-hand side anywhere where you can put a, like a question? Because this is not a, um, it's not like an open chat like the way Zooms are. So I think I like the Zoom um, a little bit better. And this one, nobody can really see what everybody else is saying unless they send me a question and I respond and send it to everybody. So let me know, can you guys, let me see, go to questions. Can you guys write, a, can somebody type a question in, send it to me, just so we can make sure everything's working? Okay, a hand is raised, that's cool. Let me see how this works. So. Yo. Send to all. So I, I, I tried this out yesterday. Um, I didn't really like it because I, I don't know. But anyways, I'm just experimenting with different uh, webinar sites. Can you see this, Kyle? Yep, I can see you. I can see you, Hugo uh, Kingsley. I can't even see. What can't you see, bud? Uh, Brandon, what's going on? I can see. So what happens is you guys send a message, and then it sends to me. But in order for everyone else to see the message, I have to send it to all. I don't know. I don't really like it too much. Um, anyway, so I didn't do too much trading this week, uh, NFP week, it's January, um, just been getting settled in with a lot of stuff, uh, with, with, um, with mentorship, helping students, helping people, and then, of course, this whole cryptocurrency movement, it's so big that my mind's been confused and stuck into this whole game, so, so Daryl, what's going on, bud? So, anyways, I'm just gonna jump right to it, guys, so... Today, um, really wanted to go over, um, as I usually do every time, is higher time frame. Really, a lot of it is higher time frame momentum. Um, did anybody did anybody trade today? Post in the in the comments. I just want to know what you guys traded, um, what pairs. Did you guys know that my main pair is UJ, um, UJ Gold, and Euro USD. And can you guys see my screen yet? I might have to do this. I think you guys can't see my screen yet. I think now you guys can see it. Let me know if you guys can see my screen now. Let me see if some questions are going to come in. Can you guys see the screen now? All right, now, okay, so if King Fleet can see it, then I'm sure everyone can see it. All right, so moving forward, right, um, since nobody's going to tell me what... Yeah, uh, UJ, okay, Hugo, UJ, uh, Alex can see the screen now, perfect. So everybody's starting to be able to see the screen now. Um, and let me know, I want to know your guys' feedback also with um, with this with this program, with GoToWebinar, because um, I'm, I'm new to the GoToWebinar. Um, I'm not really liking the way that its setup is, but it's the nice thing about this GoToWebinar is, is the fact that when you guys send questions, everybody can't see it. So it almost prevents everybody from getting distracted. But at the same time, I want it very interactive with everyone. Um, I want everybody to be able to see. So I might experiment between Skype and then, of course, um, the go-to webinar. Or not Skype, uh, Zoom. So uh, Alex didn't trade today. Um, that's fine. Yeah, UJ, Brandon, UJ, perfect. All right, so we're pretty much on the UJ train, right? Everybody's pretty much trading UJ. Um, per, for the most part, um, for the most part, the two the two main pairs that the most consistent traders that I know trade are going to be UJ and 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 GJ. For the most part, right? So for the most part, everyone um, that I, UJ moves moves very smooth. Easy to read. Less fake outs. Le less less faces. Oh, okay, that's a new word. Right, move smooth. And then one of the biggest reasons why, right, is we have we have XAU USD, aka gold, that has a negative correlation. So. 
when we have these negative correlations, it really helps us with um, confirmation. Let us let us speak. If we act like fools, then remove them. We aren't kids no more. This shit is get rid of time. Oh, I like that. I love it. That's how I feel too. Um, the reason why is because it takes a lot of time, um, not only to mentorship, but just to help people out. You know, so I like what uh, Savage Pip said. Um, you know, it takes it takes a lot out of people when they're trying to help others learn how to trade. Because um, trading is a very difficult thing. But the way that I've obtained my skills over the years is that I want to I want to pursue teaching it in the easiest, simplified way possible. Trading is not that difficult. But we make it extremely difficult. When we follow higher time frames, when we stick to a trading plan, most importantly is trading plan, honestly. Above all else is trading plan. 95% of the traders I talk to, they'll say, oh, I've been trading for two years, but I'm not good. Okay, well, do you have a trading plan? No. Well, there's your problem. Your problem is probably just you have no trading plan. So if you don't have a plan of action, why are you trading? It doesn't make sense. All right, we got GBP, Jappy too. So these are the two. For those who just came in, what I was kind of going over is um, the two most common pairs that the most... Consistent traders I know trade are. Am I spelling consistent wrong twice? UJ, USD, Jappy, and GJ. Um, GJ moves wild, right? A lot of people will choose not to trade GJ um, because GJ moves wild. More fake outs, but more payouts so GJ really pays nicely that's the thing so but for the most part I'm trading um, I'm trading just USD Jappy for the most part and Euro USD I, I really like Euro USD I started incorporating Euro USD into my trading plan um, last year kind of uh, towards the end mid mid to the end of last year and the reason why is because I never really traded EU but I don't trade anything with the euro in it. So I wanted to kind of incorporate being able to pay attention to that side of the world a little bit more. Trading the euro. And the pair moves really, really nice. So it moves similar, in my opinion, to UJ. So it just has the euro in it. And then it helps me for if I'm trading in the morning, right? So when I'm trading in with my morning strategy and when I'm using my currency meters, um, usually, for example... If like the U.S. dollar is really weak and the Japanese uh, yen is really weak, but the euro is really strong, then I may say, hey, USD Jappy might be consolidating for the time that I'm waiting for a push. So maybe switch to Euro USD, which is EU, and then the, then the easy trade is usually just there. So it gives me options in the morning to be able to trade around. Um, EU is perfect for scalping. I agree. That's a, whoa, what is this Ralph's ad? I've never seen an ad before on this. Whoa, what is going on? You guys see that ad? Get out of here. All right, I've never seen an ad pop up like that on here. Um, anyways, um, another example, right? Like, with the, I'm just going to touch a little bit of base on the currency meter real quick. So all morning, AUD has been gnarly. It's just been gnarly, probably due to news. I didn't check the Forex factory for AUD. Um, but if we're going to be looking at, let's just type in AUD Jappy, for example, it's probably going to be on a bullish trend going up just because the AUD is so strong. There we go. Right? So when we're looking at the currency meter and we're seeing, okay, well look how strong the AUD is. If you're checking around your higher time frames, for example, it's 12 o'clock now in the afternoon, my time. So this means that two hours ago, the new four hour candle just opened, right? So if I'm looking here, here's 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. And then here's the new 4-hour candle from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., right? If you didn't have confirmation in this time, right, if we didn't, and I don't trade odd oh, jappy at all, but just to help you guys get a hindsight and understanding, I'm just going to highlight this little area here. We're going to go straight to the 1-hour the time frame, and we're going to see what the 1-hour ended up doing, okay? So here's right for 6 a.m., right by for 6 a.m., we ended up making a, I'm going to, I'm going to type in higher low and I'm going to type in higher highs. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone these a bunch of times. That way I can just have them on the board. This is just so I can show you my positioning on what I'm looking for. Right? I'm looking for higher highs and higher lows. My higher lows are usually my entry points. If we've broken a resistance structure, for example, this is my resistance. This is my support, right? For this time frame. You really want to be drawing up your, your support and your resistances based off of the hour time frame and the four hour time frame. You really want to be basing them around those time frames. And then, of course, your minors in your one hour still and in your 15-minute time frame. But if we're looking at the hour time frame, for example, okay, this first, let's look at the four hour and let's look at this time. So we can see by the time price was here yesterday, we're sitting on a resistance. We're probably going to push up to the high side, but we wait for confirm. So let's go down to the hour time frame. This was yesterday. Midday yesterday, Nikki open, the Nikki market open that opens in um, Japan. We've got, we've got on the higher time frame, we end up having higher high, higher low, right? Higher highs, higher lows. Let me just move these kind of down so they don't get too distracting. Okay. There's another higher, higher low, right? More higher highs, and you can see that. Price is just making higher highs and higher lows on this hour time frame. But before any of this happened, but before any of this happened, let's look at the time. So here's 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm not awake at 4 o'clock in the morning. Here's 5 o'clock in the morning. Here's right by 6. So right by 6 a.m., price made another higher low, right? The four-hour time frame was already confirmed for potential bullish activity because we finish off so strong. Right? And we look left and we say, well, there's nothing to the left. So what do we have to do? you got to go to the higher time frame. What's higher than the four hour is going to be the daily. Because you don't really know where, where the next resistance is. Because you got to go to the daily time frame. So if we're, gonna we're just looking left. right? This is how you're going to be able to draw up your support and your resistance zones, guys, is by looking left. We always look left. This is where history comes in. This, I'm getting a phone call. I'm going ig to ignore it. This is where our history comes in, guys, right? This is how the charts have a, um, have a balance and have a structure. We just look left and we say, we just look left a little bit and we can say, okay, here's a nice structure where price has been and you keep going left, you keep going left, right? It touches it a little bit in this wick range area. And now we're in that zone finally, right? We're literally in this zone finally. We have to go to the higher time frames to get an idea of where our next destination is because if we're going to be entering off of the one-hour time frames, the 15-minute time frames, etc., you're really going to have to understand where your next zone is because that's where your profit target is, right? Either it's going to be 10 pips, 20 pips, 30 pips, whatever your trading plan um, incorporates. And on top of that, it's going to be um, where the next zone is. Because if our zone, if we're if we're here for 6 a.m., we know at 6 a.m. The, the the U.S. dollar opens. Of course, um, I don't. I've never experimented with odd Jappy at this time of the day. But for the sake of argument, based off of the currency meters, understanding that all morning the Japanese yen has been weak, the U.S. dollar has been weak, and the odd has been super strong. I'm just using this as a reference because this is how I'm basing my trades off of USD Jappy and Euro USD. Right? If you're if the euro is real weak, the US dollar is real weak, the US dollar is still weak, the Japanese yen's real weak, I might not trade that much. I might just wait till a time where there's more activity, right? Like today it's Friday, the market's closing soon, right? The market's going to close. There may be less volatility pushes. Yesterday already made a very very nice bullish push. So price can maybe go into the consolidation range again, right? But in, in regards to Odd Jappy, for the sake of argument for you guys, usually this is what I'm looking for. So the Australian dollar has been super strong. Japanese is really weak. So we're going to go back down to these charts, right? 
in the morning, we knew that the four hour time frame had a nice confirm for bullish activity still. Right? We're still pretty strong bullish, right? We want to just follow the momentum, right, guys? So, what do we do? We look left. Let's do a little recap. We look left. There's really nothing on this four hour time frame. It gets really hard to get an idea. So that's why we drop down to our daily again, right? We drop down to our daily and we draw our resistance and our support zones, etc., off of um, the daily chart. So let's pop back down to the hour chart. This is where it gets fun. So if we were trading yesterday, for example, at this time, price has already broke structure. This was London open. Right here, zero, 00, that's 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. my time, that's London Open. So, of course, Odd Jappy's probably going to have that last institutional push as the as the, the Japanese session, the, the Asian session comes to a close. Towards the end of the day, there's always that institutional push, right? Um, and now we can see my entries, I'm looking for higher lows or lower highs. So, if we're in a bullish trend, I'm looking for higher lows. So what did we have here? By 6 a.m., we did have a nice pullback. So let's drop down to the 15-minute and let's see what the 15-minute did for 6 a.m. So here's our 6 a.m.-ish time, right? So even if, even in our 6 a.m. time, there's still room for scalping uh, possibilities because we do have a – let me go to my um, – I always get confused with these things. No matter how much I use it, I still get confused on where the paintbrush is. I don't use it too often. I think it's a this is a dang paintbrush. If I can't find it, oh, here it is. Right, so this ends so this is by 545. Here's right around the news time, probably. So we end up having right higher high, lower low. We have a wick range area for price to come back, and we have a lower high, and this is for a scalping opportunity. Right, this ends up being a 2-1 confirm for bearish trend. But we know that the higher time frame is telling us that we're going bull. So if I'm doing a hyper scalp, which I tend to do often, I would look for an entry like this, and I would still take this trade if I was going to trade for a hyper scalp. So if I'm going to look for price range, 5 pips, not so much, maybe where I have taken this. But we know that it was bullish. So by the time the new hour is popping around, the hour time frame, we're, we already know because we're using this currency strength meter as a cheat sheet, right? Look at this. By 7 a.m., we had, boom, the confirm. All right, we're really going up. What did this create now? And this is live feed as the chart is still moving right now, guys. So you guys can get an understanding of how these currency strength meters really play out and they really act as a cheat sheet and they help. Odd is still super strong. It's still super strong. What did price end up doing? Price ends up making a higher low right for even 8 a.m. And here's 9 a.m. So what does that mean? What does that mean? That's right in time for the new four-hour candle. What happened here? We've already broken all structures. We're heading to our next zone. This is where 6 to 10 left off. So bada bing, bada boom. We follow momentum and by the new 10, uh, four hour candle by 10 a.m., look at this institutional push. Look at this push that we have. Let's check the pit meter. Let's just see how much. So from the start of this candle, let's go to the 15 minute and let's see how long it took. Well, it's been 25 minutes. Or no, it's been a couple hours, right? But we have... Um, but we have uh, the confirm based off these higher lows. Put it, put, I want to see in the questions box. So even though, let me look at what Hugo said. So even though we had three wigs in the upper zone, we should still expect it to push up if uh, to fill those wigs, meaning it is not going to reverse the higher time frame with those three to 15 minute wick tests. Exactly, uh, Hugo. So Hugo's question is um, just basically like if we're seeing like a lot of these wigs, he's maybe looking to think that it might reverse, right? So the whole idea is you, this is why I said, you guys, we have to understand um, where the next zones are based off of the higher time frame because this is where you get an idea of where you're going to close. Because if we're still on an uptrend and we're still going up, let's look at what the daily, let's look at what the daily chart does, right? If we're going to be blowing through these zones, 
Like, if we're going to be blowing through all of this, looking left, look at this wick range. You see this wick range? Price came back to the wick range, right? But if we're going to blow through here, where are the next zones at? The next zones, real major resistance zone will be up here, which I don't see it really coming this high um, on a Friday. That's, that's just too much of a push. But as you can see, we might even head up into the top of this zone here. And look, at, there's another wick range zone here, right? We look left and we see these are our areas that price wants to go to in these wick range areas. But these are our profit targets. So if we're entering off of a higher low, for example, on an hour, on the hour time frame, Leak this real quick. If we're entering off the hour time frame, off of higher lows, so for example, we have the early morning 6 a.m. So if we're already pretty confirmed based off the four hour time frame that we're going up, I'm looking for my two two structures. I'm looking for my higher lows if it's bullish. Okay, we already had that by 6 a.m. We had the confirm that it's going up. If we drop down to the 15 minute time frame, we would have had. Look, at, here's by, uh, here's, so here's um, 7.15, yada, yada, 7.30, 7.45. We have major confirm that is pulling up. So what does it do? It consolidates a little. It, le it throws a wake up to go. You see how it's not breaking this zone? It's just not breaking going down. We're just creating momentum to keep pushing up to the high side. This is why in your trading plans, guys, when we're in, if we're entering buys, if we're entering sales, whatever, you're placing your buy and you're placing your stop loss. If we're placing our stop loss, our stop loss is letting us know, hey, this is my trading plan. I'm willing to risk this much to gain this much. If I lose, I move on to the next one. It's not a big deal, right? But this is where our trading plans come in. Don't get caught up with too much noise on the 15-minute time frame. Because you see how the 15-minute time frame, we go up, we go down, we do this, we do that. But then eventually, what does it do in one candle? In one 15-minute candle, it just launches up 10 pips. That changes everything when you're looking at the hour time frames. When we're looking at these hour time frames, that push up literally changed everything. It literally changes everything. Don't get too caught up in the smaller time frames. The 15 minute time frames, I really use the 15 minute time frames and the five minute time frames, of course, for my entries, but most importantly for my stop losses. So if I'm gonna place buys, for example, if I'm if I'm if I'm pretty confirmed that we're going bullish, and let's say I place my buys any let's say I even place my buys around here. I place buys around here or even here. Where's my stop loss going to be? I'm going to be looking down to see where the most recent 15 minute support is. And I'm really going to be basing my stop loss around this. My stop loss is really going to be based around this 15 minute support. So this is my stop loss. This is where my stop loss is going to be. And then of course we look at the higher time frame to see where the range is for, um, for where I take profits are. That's your risk to reward, right? So if, we're, if we place buys anywhere here, so if we place a buy right here, we would have experienced around five pips, six pips drawdown. This would have been maybe our stop loss area, 11 pips, for example, for the sake of argument. But look what our reward is so far. We're still at 17 pips and counting going up, right? Scalping the swing, however you guys want to look at it. But this is where your risk to reward comes in. This is where the trading plan comes in. What's your what's your idea? Risk to reward. Alex, it really depends. So Alex's question is what is your ideal risk to reward? Any profitable and good trader is really gonna want to have a risk to reward of one to two, possibly one to three, etc. So if I'm gonna risk, if I'm gonna risk 10 pips. I might be I might want to be gaining 20 pips or 30 pips although I don't I personally don't shoot for um, that many pips I don't shoot for because when I hyper scalp or when I when I'm trading 
Um, I'm I for a lot of the times, depending on how many entries I'm putting in. For example, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this. Um, let me let me use this for an example. Because I would have been looking at this in the morning, and I probably would have been looking to take entries possibly here. So if I have a guaranteed area where I might have like up to five pips or so, I might compound heavy. I might put 10 to 20 entries on, and I don't have time to put stop losses for all those entries because my profit is coming within a few um, candles, right? But ideal risk to reward, I would still say, one to two, one to three possibly, even one to one. So at least you're 50%. So every trade you do is still 50%. You're either going to win 50% or you're going to lose 50%. But no matter what, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're still going to come out winning something. But if you place on one to two, no matter what, you're always winning your trades. You're always winning trades. So if I'm placing buys here, for example, so let's say this. Let's make up a, a quick trading plan. Let's make up a quick trading plan. Trading plan ideas, right? Um, I make my trading plan available for people. If people want to see my trading plan, and if, if they want to get a template off my trading plan, just send me a private message, and I'll send you my Google um, Drive on my trading plan. But typically, what my trading plan is looking for is this. I like to trade the early morning push, and I base everything around the one-hour time frame and the four-hour time frame. And then I jump down to the 15-minute time frame. So four-hour time frame bias. Whoa, money. I like that. Four-hour time frame bias. One-hour time frame momentum. First, I'm starting off in the morning. Somebody asked me the other day, Kyle, how do you view how do you view the four hour time frame to the daily time frame? Well, there's no comparison. Because if I'm trading in the morning, the daily time frame has less credibility as the four hour time frame will. Because we're gonna have six candles or however many candles until the new uh, daily opens. So the daily, in my opinion, is most effective when the new daily opens, right? So here's an example. This daily closed here. We close above resistance. As you can see, there's nothing stopping us from going to the high side. We made a new higher low, and it broke resistance. So the new daily opens right when the Asian session goes. So the daily is going to be more um, effective around the time that the new daily opens. But the four-hour time frame, if I'm trading early in the morning, we still have a few four-hour candles until that new until that new daily is ready to follow up. So I'm not looking at the, the daily as much as I'm looking at the four-hour if I'm trading in the morning. If I'm trading in the afternoon, then I'm, I'm looking at the four hours, and then I'm using that to base off of the daily as well. And I'm never forgetting the one-hour time frame. I'm never forgetting the one-hour time frame. So trading plan ideas... Right, I'm looking at four. Uh, I'm I'm looking for my four hour higher time frame bias, and then I'm looking at my one. I'm looking for my one hour momentum. So, for example, if I have a four hour time frame bias that we're going bullish, let's look to see what the one hour time frame did. What did the one hour time frame do here? The one hour time frame made a higher low, right, and it already broke structure, right. We have already broken. The structure, and if we look less, what's holding it back from going to the upside, guys? There's nothing holding it back from going to the upside. We just look left, and there's nothing to bounce off of. Just keep looking. Look at look. You got to scroll back so far on the hour, right? That's why we jump to the four-hour time frame to really see what's holding it back. And this is why I'm bouncing between my currency meters, and I'm seeing, okay, well, what's the currency meter doing? What's the news doing for that day? Look how strong the Australian dollar was. The Australian's been strong. It's still strong. It's still been pushing. Since we've been on this chat, it's pushed up like 15, 20 pips since we've been doing this uh, webinar, right? And I actually, Odd Jappy was a really good example today because of the um, currency strength meter um, and the fact that the odd was so strong and the Japanese yen was so weak or the U.S. dollar was so weak. I could have done the exact same thing on AUD USD. So if I'm going to type in 
USD, odd USD, let's look at Awanda, it's probably going to still be pushing to the high side, right? It's going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be doing the same thing. We're just pushing to the high side. You're just following the higher time frame's momentum, right? But let's go back to Odd Jappy since we've been on Jappy. I don't know if anybody trades Odd Jappy in here, but um, it looks like it doesn't move so bad. I don't trade it. There's just You don't need to trade all the pairs. Just stick with a couple pairs and you'll be better off be, being a more consistent trader. So we're going to say... We're looking at we're looking at our four hour time frame bias. We're looking at our one hour time frame momentums. We're seeing how it's respecting the support and the resistances. The four hour has already been blowing through. We're going to the high side, right? So then, what do we do? The way my trading plan is constructed is look for two two structures. What this means. What a 2-2 structure means is if we have a if we have a higher low and now we have a higher high, right? We have a higher high because it this is, it becomes a higher high still because we look left and we've broken this resistance, right? This resistance level is here. We've broken our resistance level. We've made a new higher high. Right now, what do we have? We have a let me delete this thing. We've broken our resistance level, right? So, if I'm looking for my two, two oh my gosh, why does it do this for some reason on Trading View? Anytime you click on the paintbrush, it puts it on like memory. So, you I don't know how to just get off a of paintbrush. I, I've been using Trading View for two years, and I've never known how to get off of it. So it just it gets really annoying. That's why I never used Paintbrush before. If I was going to draw up my support and my resistances, either I'm just going to use a rectangle just to kind of show. So here's a resistance level. We've broken through higher high, right? Now we've made a higher low, right? So if my trading plan is saying I'm looking for – Higher highs and higher lows off of the four hour time frame, and then you just keep moving down to all the different time frames, and you're going to have the exact same types of movements in those time frames, right? So, for the morning, if we're looking for a 2 2 structure, we have okay, what has price already done? Price has already made a higher low yesterday, right? This is right after the Asian Open, and then Right um, for the Nikki area time, it made another big, nice push. We've already made a higher low. We haven't even established the higher high yet. We really haven't established the higher high yet on the four-hour time frame. This is the highest high that it's been um, for current time trading. So if we're looking at the one-hour time frame now, we're going to be establishing where is our higher low. So how do we do that? We're going to say, well, price broke through our resistance. This is the resistance level. Here's our support levels. Sorry if it's – I'm going to make this resistance red. Usually um, I have all red, but it's been a little green. So if we're going to break through our resistance level, here's our resistance level, right? We've already said we're going to – we've already broken structure. We've already broken structure on the one hour time frame at 5 a.m. So by 6 a.m. we had a pullback and what did that make? It made a higher low. It made a higher low. So the way this looks, this is 2-2 confirm we're going up. This is 2-2 confirm that we're going up because we already have higher lows. Higher highs, higher lows. So this is 2-1. This is 2-1 real confirm bullish trend. We're still going up, right? We're still going up. And even looking back further, it's still just continuation of 2-2s two going up. But the way that it looks is higher low, higher high. Higher low, higher high. We broke resistance. So if we're going to continue into a bullish trend, because price could have just kept going. But what did it do? It made a nice pullback. It made a new, it probably was a news pullback. We had a nice pullback at 6 a.m. right for 7 a.m. to just start really sparking the bullish 
continuation push. Another higher high. More higher lows, right? We're, we broke this resistance again. This is a, now it created a new resistance level. Let me clone this. Now we've made a new resistance level and we broke it. So now the resistance turns support. So now it's bouncing off the support. It's making a higher low. We're going up to the upside. The higher time frame confirmed we are going to the high side, right? If we looked at it, we already knew from the 2 a.m., okay, it's really confirming. Well, what did the 6 a.m. do? It made a little bit of noise. It pulled back just to continue going up. And what did those in this time frame, in, in this four-hour candle, this was four one-hour candles, and we already know what it did. We know what the four hours candles did. It made a rally. It made a push up for 7 a.m., then 8, 9, right in time for 10 a.m. Right in time for 10 a.m., it made another higher low. We're going up. The way my trading plan looks is I'm looking for four-hour time frame bias. I'm looking for one-hour time frame momentum. I'm looking for two two structures, and I'm basing my time my my trading around the four hour time frame. So the way the four hour time frame looks for me is going to be six a.m., which is a new four hour candle. Ten a.m. new four hour candle. Right. If there's too much noise going on, if there's too much noise going on. I might wait until 10 a.m. for the new four-hour candle because they're easy. They're easy trades. It becomes an easy trade. This is this is right for 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is confirmed. We made another higher low. It just continues higher high, higher low, higher high, right, higher low, another higher high, another higher low. Bullish trend. We're going up, right? You guys don't need EMAs. If we're using EMAs, it still works. These EMAs are probably just using this 14 EMA as a dynamic support. It's just going up to the high side, guys. When we're placing our trades and, our, and, and, and we're understanding that, hey, if I enter, if I'm, whoops, let me go back down to the 15-minute time frame. Sorry, the this, this screen might be getting a little noisy, right? So this was our early morning push. Here's where our risk to reward factor comes in. Okay. We need to establish where our lowest point is on this 15 minute time frame, and it was here. Okay, this is where the lowest point was. So, if we're on a bullish trend and I'm placing buys anywhere off this 15 minute time frame, I need to keep in mind that this is where my stop loss is probably going to be. My stop loss is going to be beyond the support, which I'm just recapping what I've already gone over. Paintbrush, oh, Hugo, paintbrush, right click on Windows, deselect it usually. Okay, I'm going to try that out. Um, and also, Hugo had another question. I look at the four hour candle when it closes before London open, then at each one hour candle, and it closes until direction is clear. This has helped me big time. Amazing, Hugo. I'm so glad. The higher time frames always win, guys. They're not going to lie to you. But the 15 minute, the five minute, those are going to lie to you. They're going to confuse you, they're going to trick you, um, etc. So if I'm if 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 we're saying this, so going back to trading plan, right? Let's go back to our trading plan. This is hypothetical. This is hypothetical. But if this is kind of what my trading plan looks like, I'm gonna say, let's say a total of four entries. Four entries at ten pips profit at ten pips profit for two positions stop loss in profit let's say maybe five pips what this looks like this is how it looks like so the morning we've already established that we had a we've already established that we had a higher time frame momentum we already established that odd jappy was probably going up based off the higher time frame we knew the daily time frame, there was a big gap for us to, to reach. And the higher time frame just continued was making higher highs and higher lows, right? So if we're doing four entries, we've already established the higher time frame is going up. 
So anywhere, even in this time, let's say this is where our buys were. We put four entries here. For example, our stop loss is going to be where this recent um, lowest low was for um, the 15 minute time frame, right? So where this dotted line is, this is where our stop loss area is uh, would have been. This is where my stop loss area would have been. And you can see there's nice distance between these EMAs. There's nice distance. It's just creating a nice strong support that, hey, we're going up onto the uptrend, right? It's using the 14 EMA just to kind of bounce off. It just continue going into the uptrend. But if my trading plan is saying, okay, I'm putting four entries at 10 pips profit, two positions are getting taken at 10 pips with two um, entries, five pips in, in profit as my stop loss. So this is the way that it's going to look. I've got four entries here. My stop loss is in this time is going to be around eight pips. So the most drawdown we would have suffered was four pips drawdown in this situation. The most drawdown we would have had um, per position would have been four pips. Okay. This is where our stop loss would have been. This is where our reward comes in. So 10 pips profit would have been around here. So our 10 pip would have got taken around 8.30 in the morning. Around 8.30 my time, two would have been taken. This would have been a total of 20 pips profit for two positions, right? This is how a trading plan looks. This is how my trading plan would have looked. I've got 20 pips profit for two positions. So boom, right? If if the chart is just bouncing up and down, you don't need to stay on the chart, guys. Place your stop loss and your take profit, and you can walk away. Come back to the chart and look at how the next hour finished off. I like to trade everything around the beginning of one hour time, uh, one hour candles four-hour candles, etc. right? If I'm looking for the scalp to swings or if I'm just looking for um, just momentum, um, this is what I'm doing. We've already established we're going up to the uptrend. We've made higher lows on the four-hour and the one-hour time frame. So we've already established the trend is going bullish. We've already broken through our resistances. We're going up to the upside. This is how our trading plan looks. Two positions have already taken 10 pips each. So what do we got? We got 20 pips profit already done and backed, right? And now we have five pips. Our entries were here. We've got around five pips. Now we're going to run a stop loss. So now we've got two positions running with the stop loss. And you see how this works? Now our stop loss is five pips per position. But what ended up happening? Well, the new four-hour candle opened, and we're still going up to the upside. So where did price end up pushing? It ended up pushing up 20 pips. So now we have two pips, or we have two running um, trades that are still at 20 pips a position. Okay? They're running, so that's another 40 pips. So in this trade this morning, if we were to trade odd jappy, and we were to have circulated... Okay, currency meters, we would have factored in. We would have looked at, of course, we would have looked at Forex Factory also. I don't want to exclude this from the webinar. Forex Factory lets us know um, news, right? Forex Factory helps us with news. And, of course, there's a NFP week, a lot of news going on for the CAD and the U.S. dollar. But the Australian dollar had that nice confirm, right? The currency meter had nice momentum with the odd being so strong and the US dollar and the Japanese yen just being so weak. So going back to the Japanese yen, this is what we're looking at, odd uh, jappy. We're using this as a cheat sheet, guys. And for hours, the Japanese yen has been so weak. So if it's been so weak for hours and the odd is so strong, we're probably just pushing up to the high side. So this is why we're using these higher time frames as easy peasy, Ricardo. I love it. I love it. I love it. Send to all. It becomes easy peasy, guys, when we're just using higher time frame momentum with our news, 
with our currency meters. The currency meter really is a cheat sheet. I, I don't know what else to say besides it's really a cheat sheet. But above all else, higher time frame momentum. But it just helps with confirmation. So this is where our trading plan left us off with, guys. Now we've got two pips. We've got two positions running with five pips in, in profit with our stop loss. Right? We've already we've already bagged we've already bagged twenty pips. We've already bagged twenty pips during this trading plan for those two positions running. And this was our risk to reward. So our risk our risk was eight pips, right? And this is what our rewards are. Our reward is so much greater. Ten pips on this one, okay? And then ends up going 20 pips up. This is where your risk to reward factor comes in. And this is where the tr lemon squeezy. I love these things. Easy, breezy, beautiful. I love it. I love I love your guys' uh, messages uh, in the in the in the comment section. Um I just love it. I love that you guys are comprehending. And I mean this took me a long time to get the hang to understand, guys. Like, I'm gonna be very honest with you. When I was trading. It wasn't until I really understand what or understood what um, higher highs and higher lows really meant on the higher time frame that actually got me making money in the Forex market. Later, Savage, bro. Talk to you soon, bud. Um, it wasn't until I really understood how these higher highs and higher lows worked that my consistency really kicked in and I was able to actually um, make a, a nice trading plan for myself around the higher time frame momentum and then factoring in everything else that I've been covering um, in this webinar. And for those who have just started attending, um, I am recording this, so I will send it out to your guys' emails and upload to YouTube. So you guys can use this as a study guide and a new template to kind of um, go back and review um, if you guys wish to do so. But this is how a trading plan works. This is how a trading plan works. So of all the traders that message me on a daily basis, and a lot of them say, hey, I've been trading, I've literally been trading for two years, and I'm not consistent, and it's really because they don't have a trading plan. I ask them all, What's your do you have a trading plan? No, that's your problem. A lot of people and a lot of mentors do not insist on traders having a trading plan. If a mentor is not really pushing out trading plan for his students, then there might be something really wrong with the mentor because if a mentor is not pushing out a trading plan, how the heck is he consistent in his trading himself? You need a trading plan. Make sure you have a trading plan, guys. And I love the fact that today's Odd Jappy was so um, nice concluding NFP week based on currency meters because it acted as a really good template for you guys on what I'm looking for. So... Um, Send me some comments to let me know how you guys are comprehending this. Just because I got a lot of um, I got a lot of messages saying that easy peasy. I'm really understanding it. So I just want to make sure that no one's time is wasted, and I want to make sure that um, the time that I put into you guys is accurate. And this is the way that I trade. I trade based off of support and resistance, higher time frame momentum. I'm literally moving when the major institutions are making its move. I wait for confirmation and then I get into the market. I'm very re I'm very relaxed about how I trade. If I'm too tired to wake up for 6 a.m. in the morning, I I'll set my alarm, I'll snooze it, I'll do whatever I can do, and I'll push it out. Because I still got 7 o'clock, I've still got the 7 a.m. candle, I've got the 8 a.m. candle, I've got the new four hour candle at 10. There's so many opportunities throughout the day to trade that you guys don't need to be rushing trades. Do not rush your trades. Rushing trades is what gets you inconsistency and it's what gets you losing. You're going to lose rushing a trade. So always base everything off of our higher time frame momentum, four hour, one hour, daily. Oh, there's a lot of noise here from what I've covered today. But we're basing everything off of these higher time frames. And I'm and I'm trading based around what the chart has just given me. I don't care if it's going up or if it's going down. We know that. As as Forex traders, we know whether if it goes up, we buy, we sell, if it goes down. That's it. 
Yes. Okay. So uh, Dante says higher highs and, and lower lows based on breaking resistance are a little clearer now. Perfect. So that's really what I wanted to go over today as well was just the breaking the resistance or the support levels and then it creates that lower low or that higher low. So let me go down to let me go down to um, let me go to Euro, uh, USD Jappy now. I'm gonna go to USD Jappy and give you guys from uh, my actual trade this morning and what I have running and what's on my Instagram. Uh, Ricardo says, I like the support and resistance breakthroughs well using the trend from higher time frame. Perfect. Good job, Ricardo. So as we can see here, guys, right, a lot of, lot of confusion going on. A lot of confusion. Let's go to the higher time frame for USD Jappy this morning. We know that USD Jappy this morning, we know that we had a lot of news, right? So here's from 2, here's to 6 a.m. You can see. If we just follow momentum, uh, there was no clear 100% direction because news was being launched early kind of in the morning. So you drop down to the lower time frame. We drop down to the lower time frame. What do we have? Okay, so by 5.30, we had the break pull down. And then what do we have? Just lots of noise. But what is price doing? Price is making. Oh, I already have all my stuff all drawn up. I didn't. I forgot. I had it uh, locked out. We've got lower highs, lower lows, right? This is our. This is our recent support here. Okay. So before all this noise happened, we already had this. We look in left and we say, this is the recent support. Price already broke strong through our support. This is because of news. This was because of the NFP. Okay. What did price do? Made a pullback makes another lower high overall, it breaks down again. So we've got nice, so uh, now we end up having a nice support, nice resistance area, right? So what is price doing? It just continues to make lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. If price is making lower highs and lower lows continuously, even on the 15 minute time frame, and the hour time frame is telling us the same thing, there's nothing stopping this chart from dropping right now. Look at how the hours finished off. You guys can look at my Instagram and you guys can see um, the post uh, that I made that I posted. We've got lower low, lower high off of the one hour time frame, the four hour time frame. What do we have on the four hour time frame? We had wicks to fill, right? So we, this was a big wick to fill, right? From 6 till 10 a.m., there wasn't as there was a lot of noise that happened, support and resistance trading. And then what did it do? It left us off with another whip to fill. You just gotta follow the momentum. See how the momentum is, guys? We just follow the momentum. And this was right in time for the new um, 10 to Asian session open, four hour candle. So we look at the one hour time frame, we see what it did. Made a lower low. This becomes the lower low because we broke through this zone. This zone, looking left, was our recent support zone. It broke through our support zone. So now this becomes our new lowest low because we look left and there's nothing here. We've got nothing. Here's our lowest low. Here's our lower high now. You can see price comes up, rejects our zone again, rejects this whole um, zone again. And what does it do? It creates another lower high. Phenomenal scalp opportunity. This is when I got in. Um, my Instagram shows what I looked for and how I got in. My real execution was off of the five minute time frame. Was off the five minute time frame and this was my execution was here. This was where I got in. On my Instagram you guys can see it clearly and I'll explain what I saw. We had, we had um, already higher time frame bias that were going down, right? We're going down. So this is what happens. This is where our cells get put in. This is So price ends up hitting the support again. It bounces up. This is right before 11 o'clock. See 11 o'clock? This is right where the new candle opened. 
phenomenal scalp opportunity for um, for um, well, I'm still holding my position, but um, phenomenal scalp opportunity because what Price did was the higher time frame already told me that we're going bearish, and this is my signature two one confirm on the five minute time frame. It works the same for any time frame, but we have we have this highest high point here. We have a HH. Now we've got a lower low, and now we've got a lower high. You can see price breaks. It, it, it pulls up strong here. It hits the 50 EMA. If we don't use any EMAs, all it's doing, if you guys like trend lines, whatever you do, um, it's just respecting the zone. It's literally just respecting the zone. Okay? Look back a little bit. We can see here's a nice trend line, nice trend line. Boom, boom, boom. It's just respecting this whole zone. I know a lot of people love to use trend lines. Right? Now we have... Now we have... 15 minute time. Oh, I need to go back to the 5 minute time frame. This is where my executions were. My executions were here. On this lower high. On this lower high. I didn't use a trend line, but if you were using a trend line, here's an example. Here's an example. Higher high, lower low, lower high. This is 2 1. This is 1 2 1. So this is 2 1 for 2 2 confirm. We're going down. That's that's how my, this is how 2 1 con. I get a lot of messages on 2 1 confirm, and that's what I'm looking for. If I already know that, pri that if it's a specific time of the day that price is going to make a push, this is what I'm looking for for my hyper scalps. This is what I'm looking for for 2 1 confirms on the five minute time frame. 15 minute time frame, etc. And as we can see, the one hour time frame did make the. Oh, there's a lot of noise now because we moved these. It made what well, you guys already had known, but it made the lower low, right? It makes a new lower low. The new lower low is because it broke through the support and now it's turned resistance. Now that resist, now this, uh, Resistant with now the support is now resistance. So support turn resistance. Now we've made another lower high on the higher time frame, one hour time frame to confirm going down onto that downside. Right? These are the things that I'm looking for, guys. These are the things that are helping me with my scalping opportunities. I'm looking for things like wick fills. So here for example, here's from seven AM. Look at from 7 a.m. Let's just do a little blockage here. Here's 7 a.m. What did 7 a.m. do? We had a major pull down, a pull up, and then what did it do? Price just wants to go and fill the wick, just following momentum, right? The easiest trades I take are literally wick fills because wick fills happen usually at the very beginning of the start of that candle. So if we go down to the 15-minute time frame and let's look for... 7.45 to 8 a.m. So, here's 7.45 to 8 a.m. Here is the, here is the wick fill. This was that, the, this amount of pips that it drops is that with these four candles here is the, is, is that one hour time frame. So, the next one, of course, is going to be 9 a.m. Um, it looks like a better example may have been from six, from, uh, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. So if we go to the one hour time frame and we look at how the how this 6 a.m. finished off. So from 6 a.m. Actually, my example was from here. But as you can see, the, the profits that I'm looking for are usually in the very beginning of the candle. They're usually in and out or scalping the swing. So when we have wick fill opportunities and you place cells here, and you have just like the other example trading plan about putting four entries. So if we stack four cells, and we look at, let's go look at the 15 minute time frame. If we had a higher time frame bias that we're going down, right? So here is right for the seven o'clock. So if we stack cells here, if we're stacking our cells, Right here, we're stacking four cells, for example. 
And now where's our stop loss going to be? Well, my stop loss is going to be around the recent resistance. If I'm really higher time frame biased that we're going bearish uh, trend, I'm going to be looking at the 15 minute time frame and I'm going to say, okay, where's my nice um, stop loss going to be? Well, this is where my stop loss is going to be. My stop loss is going to be beyond this 12 minute uh, or 15 minute um, time frame um, resistance. This is where my stop loss is going to be. Risk to reward. Daryl, I noticed you traded London session a few days ago. Yeah, I traded London a few days ago because I didn't trade much that day. And London was so beautiful that I was like, okay, I'm going to trade it. So it was just a... Uh, it was just a nice opportunity. London Open is always nice. Uh, price always makes nice. But so if we're going to trading plan, for example, right? So we stacked four sales. We're already higher time frame bias, right? Higher time frame bias. Risk to reward. Look what price does right by 7 a.m. Boom. Already drops 10 pips. You're probably already in and out within 15 minutes, right? This is why I like trading around the wick fills, the higher time frame bias, one hour wick fills, four hour wick fills. Because the price, the 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 momentum and the the profits come so quickly, you can just get in and out, and you can enjoy the rest of your day. You don't have to sit in front of the charts all day long. Leave leave um, scalps to swing. So if I have four, if I open up four entries, we've got four entries that close at ten pips profit each. Boom, two close at two closed at ten pips. So now we've already got twenty pips profit, and now we've got five running at. Um, Five pips stop loss and profit. So in this situation, five pips profit, five pips would have been here. Our stop loss would have would have got hit. So we would have took a total of thirty pips for this trading day. This is where this is where your trading plans come in, right? That's part of your trading plan. If you hit, if your stop loss gets hit, okay, you just bag thirty pips. What does that look like? What does this look like? Pips. If we're trading on, if we're trading on, um, let's just do mini lots for example, point one zeros, right? What do point one zeros equal? They equal one dollar per pip. Okay. So if I have two entries at ten pips profit, what does that give us, guys? Twenty bucks, right? We just got we got twenty bucks off of these two entries, and now we have we had our five pips stop loss, five pip stop loss, right? So what does that give us for the total of the day? Two other entries uh, equivalent to another ten. That's thirty bucks for this trading day, for this um, for this part of your trading plan. On I mean, if we're trading on point ten lots. It depends on what our size is of our accounts, etc. But this is just a hypothetical scenario. I'm just giving you guys a hypothetical scenario using um, just a stand or a um, uh, mini lot size, so you guys can get an idea. So for today, we make thirty bucks. This was our trading plan. We're done. Maybe our trading plan says check back at ten o'clock. Maybe our trading plan says check back at eight o'clock. Right? I'm a firm believer in pretty much trading. One session a day, looking for your one move a day, and this is what you look for. You're looking for this a day. You, you look for the same thing every single day. So what was I looking for? I'm looking for a higher time frame momentum. Let's go back to um, Euro Jappy. I'm looking for... Was it Euro Jappy? Oh, Odd Jappy. Odd Jappy. I'm looking for four hour time frame bias. I'm I'm looking to see where's the trend going. I'm looking to see where the four hours going, where the one hour is going, what the fifteen minute time frame is doing, what our news is doing, what our currency meter is doing. All of these things are factoring in, helping me make my decision. Once i once I have had a higher time frame bias, and I'm sticking to my bias, that's what I'm sticking to. And I'm having my stop loss in prof or I'm having my stop loss and I'm having my take profits, depending on my trading plan for that day, or depending on how I'm trading. If my stop loss gets hit, 
and it ends up not being a bearish trend, for example, and it's bullish, I'll adapt and attack. I'll, I'll look to see if the 15-minute time frame is making, if it breaks resistance levels and possibly makes a new high or low, then maybe, hey, maybe we are going up. So I'm going to adapt and attack. I'm going to put four new entries with my stop loss below the support zone because maybe we had a bad analysis and the trend is actually going bullish. It's okay to make a bad analysis. So you adapt and attack. You make up for your loss. You keep moving on. You keep moving forward. This is what the trading plan is. And when you're developing your trading plans, guys, just understand that not all trading plans are good. So if you have a lot of EMAs on your screen, keep in mind also, you might be confusing yourself. You might know you, you might not know um, exactly when to enter or how to enter, right? So if we're just using higher time frame biases, if we're following the momentum, this is where we're staying safe. When we remove strategy, I don't, my strategy is basically what the banks are doing. It's basically what just the market is doing. If the market breaks, if the market breaks, let me go to a brand new chart. I'm going to type in odd USD. If, 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 Let's look at the 15-minute time frame. Okay, here we go. We have looking left, right. Let's say we've got a resistance level. We've got a support level, right? Let's make this support green. Just because we buy support, okay? If we already are breaking this level, if we're breaking this level, price is going to make a new higher low if it's going to keep going up. And the way we know where it's going to keep going up is mostly off of our higher time frames. Like if we see this big old wick right here, see it on the 15 minute time frame? Well, that's gonna be a wick on the one hour time frame, probably like a wick to fill. There it is, right here. Look at this big old wick to fill, right? A big old area of price wants to come back into the market probably. So what did price do? Low, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. It's just confirming we're gonna go in this direction. So when we're looking for confirmations, we're waiting for we're waiting for price to do something like this, for example. This is something that I would have looked for. Okay. We have our resistance and our support levels. Okay. This is a major consolidation box. This is right before 8 a.m., right? And what, what we see here is this is what I would have been looking for. This is right what I would have been looking for. This is what I would have called my 2-1 confirm. Whatever. Whatever you guys want to call it. This is what I call it. This is how I look at it. Okay. We've already broken our structures. Okay. Look at, we have um, minor zones here as well. We look left. We've got minor zones here. Okay. We've already broken. You see how this, this candle, it breaks through this structure. Okay. We break through this structure, and what does it do? Okay, we made our first pullback. We made our first small pullback, and it wasn't a significant pullback. If this pullback came all the way down here, I would say we might be, it might pull up and make a lower high and continue it on the downside, but it didn't. It made a strong rejection. It made a pullback, and then now what is it doing? It's just rallying. It's rallying. Here's our resistance level. We've already broken. This recent resistance, and now it's turning support, right? We buy support or we buy these higher lows. This is what I'm literally buying, guys. I'm literally putting my entries based off of higher lows or lower highs on either the 15-minute time frame, the 5-minute time frame, etc. And understanding that if the higher time frame is telling us that we're going up, then we're just going to trust the higher time frame. And what did it do? It made another... Higher high. It's small, but it's still a higher high and a higher low. And then boom, what did it do? It really broke through our structure. It really broke through this resistance level. And then what did it do? It made another pullback, and we have more higher lows. Just continuing trend. 
You guys see how that works? We've broken our support, our our, our uh, resistance level. We've broken our resistance level. We came back, made another higher low, was continuing the bullish trend. This is this is what we're looking for, guys. We're looking for our zones. So the way we develop our zones is we look at the one hour time frame. And we look left. So if we are going to look left, we look left, right? We look left. See how all of these candles are here? And you see how it makes a nice little um, kind of shelf? Kind of looks like a shelf or such. This is what I'm looking for. I look left. Okay, there's a zone. I look left. Okay, here's another zone. These zones are our profit target areas. So we can get an idea where our profit target area is. And after that, we really don't have much. We really don't have much unless we're on the four-hour time frame. And then we draw it up all the way across the screen or daily since, of course, it's going to look the same as uh, Jappy in this case. So we draw it all the way across the screen. We draw our support and resistance levels. But for the sake of this diagram, I'm going to continue on just the hour and the 15 minutes real quick just so you guys can get this idea. <laughs> Right, and we and an odd USD, odd Jappy might be coming down too right now. Let's see what the currency meter did. The odd, the US dollar may be gaining some strength or something. No, it's just it's just bouncing support and resistance. It might continue onto an uptrend. Um, this is probably just a pullback to continue going to the high side. But anyways, just to continue, um, not not uh, to not lose focus. We have our resistance because a lot of people are a little confused on like the higher lows, higher highs, lower lows, lower highs, where these are, how these fit in. This is where it is. You've got to understand where your support and your resistance levels are. Once we understand where our support and our resistance levels are, this is when we, we um, understand that this is once price breaks a structure and it's making like a higher low, okay. Now we've really broken the structure, another higher low. It's just two twos. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. It's continuing the bullish trend. We've already broken the resistance, the higher low, buy the higher low. And just place your stop loss and your take profit. Or just watch the chart. Right? Watch the chart. Walk away from the chart. And in this case, it took a couple hours to get to the profit. That's okay if it takes a couple hours to get to the profit. Right, it's NFP weeks, the beginning of the week, or it's the beginning of the month, it's January, New Year, right? A lot of traders don't trade at this time of the year. There's just not a lot of movement on the charts. As you can see, it takes a little while to maybe get to some profits. But we just follow momentum. This is what momentum trading looks like. Momentum trading literally looks like this. Higher highs, higher lows, higher time frame bias, etc. I think you guys are getting um, more of more of the hang of it, I guess. So as some people are starting to leave, um, I'm assuming that some people are really grasping this information. So I'm hoping that you guys are. I'm getting a lot of message from you guys. Thank you for the responses. Um, and just keep in mind, like I take, I, I set aside part of my day, um, part of my weeks, every week, every day for students and people that have questions because I, I care about traders. I truly care about traders understanding how to trade correctly. This little thing, higher highs, higher lows, support and resistance trading, this is literally the basis to market structure. So this is why I teach it. This is why I help you guys understand it and understand that our 15-minute time frames, we're using them really as stop losses, and we're using our higher time frames as take profits, and we're seeing where the direction of the trend can head. Because once you zoom out and you say, oh, wow, look at the big picture, oh, that was easy, but when you're looking at it in real time, it's going to be confusing. Maybe you enter sales here and it goes down and then it goes up and you're like, okay, now you're negative. You didn't pull your profits. You don't really know where price is going. It's going up. It's going down. It's going up. It's going down. So we're going to be using our 15 minute time frame as where our stop losses are. And we're going to be using our higher time frames as where our take profits are. Even the 15 minute can still be used as take profit, as you can see. But little things like this, we had a wick to go fill, higher highs, higher lows. Price wants to go back to this point. Thanks. Makes a lot of sense. Awesome, Brandon. Awesome, Hugo. Um, awesome. If it's not a question, really, 
but I read somewhere that never allow winning lower your priority of learning. Let me read this again. It's not a question really, but I, I read somewhere that never allow winning lower your pri priority of learning. Yes, I love that because this is the whole idea with trading. If we're going to trade for max, let's say, two hours a day, well, what do you do for the rest of the day? Either maybe you have work or you're a full-time trader. Well, you study. Study more than you trade. Review your trades. See what you did right. See what you did wrong. Practice. See where you can improve. Etc. You need to continuously on a continuous like for example, if, if I work at like a car dealership and I'm selling cars, well, chances are at these car dealerships, what we're gonna have is you're gonna have training meetings, maybe Fridays are training meetings, Mondays are training meetings, you're gonna have big sale meetings, right? So if you have a big sale meeting or a big sale coming up, what are you gonna do? You're gonna have a meeting that guys, this is what I want you to do. I want you to approach your customer happy. I want you to approach your customer with this. I want you to really engage with them. We're pushing the sale, guys. Blah, 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 blah. This is what the sales manager is going to be putting into the salesman's head. It's a study guide, right? The same thing for trading. If it's the weekend time, the markets aren't open, okay, go to the charts. Check the charts out. See what the charts are doing. Or we'll see what they did. Review. Get an idea of how you're going to enter into this next um, season, into the next month, into the next week. Always go back, look at the trend, look at the charts, look at the trends, and then for me, what really helped me out a lot was removing EMAs and trading naked. If you just trade naked charts with just support and resistance levels, it really can help out dramatically. It really, really, really can help out dramatically when you just have support and resistance levels, higher time frame bias, etc. I'm just, I, I want to touch on this, for example. I want to touch on this a little bit because um, I actually love trading these types of pushes. Um, so the daily, we know that the daily when kept on pushing. I just want to touch on this real quick. The day, uh, This was a probably a daily uh, resistance. Yes, yeah, kind of barely hit the daily looking left, right? Super strong. Let's see how many pips this was. Oh, yeah, it's still going. Perfect. So I love, I really like trades like this because if I'm trading and this actually, this actually, once we have confirmed that price like pulls down super heavy like this, you can see to just start entering into the market. I enter into these all times throughout the week. I, there's always opportune times where the 15 minute chart looks like this. And what we can see, we've already been having a nice bullish push. We hit probably a daily resistance zone. So what it, all the time it took for price to go up, it's going down in just two 15-minute candles. Brilliant. So if we are trading at this time, like if I was actively trading at this time, this is, and I saw something like this, I trade this a lot. We already have, a, this actually is a 2-1-2, two, two, but it's, it's not a safe 2-1. We had a higher high, a lower low. This high did not breach this. So it's, it's harder to spot, not as safe, but then we had confirm. Boom. Breaking down. What are the five? The five minute was just probably, um, f yeah, a bunch of candles pulling down. So that would have been a cool trade. I look for trades like this. Um, I trade trades like this all the time, and then I'm looking to get in and out usually. Um, if I see confirm super heavy bearish momentum, and I'm stacking my orders, I'm usually stacking a lot of orders here, and I'm just closing. I'm using my close all script on my MetaTrader four. I'm just closing everything out. But this was a nice momentum trade here. Um, but anyways, I really hope that, Kyle, do you believe in, let me go through these questions. A lot of questions here. Yes, it takes time training, studying. Kyle, do you believe in, sim uh, absolutely, simulator is awesome. Um, a question came in, yes, use simulator if you can. Absolutely, as much as you can. Go back, practice what you did, practice how to do it better. Simulator helps me a lot. Perfect. She's shooting down hard. Yeah, she really was, Daryl. She's really pushing down hard. I bet you odd Jappy is going down too then. Let's look at let's just let's just see. 
our jab, yep, our jab is going down. That means that USD jabby is probably going down now. Let's look. Not 100% sure, but let's look. Yep. So we're just pushing in the direction of the Japanese yen, right? So when we look back at our currency meter, the Japanese yen probably has some more strength. A little more strength. But it allowed it to continue into the momentum, right? So if we're looking at USD jabby, right? I mean, of course, we've got... Lower highs, lower lows. We're breaking the structure, and we're just going to keep continuing down. This is what this is. This is just what I'm looking for, guys. This is how I trade. This is literally how I trade. So I'm literally looking for wick fills, four hour time frame, higher time frame momentum. That's it. That's literally what it is. And then I incorporate how many entries I want to do, where I'm going to close at, scalping the swing. This is what if you guys are struggling that you need to be working on is understanding the higher time frame. If you understand the higher time frame, the one hour chart, the four hour chart, you're going to be invincible. Nothing's going to stop you. Nothing will stop you if you can understand the higher time frame momentum. Let's look left. We have a resistance zone. Right? We have a resistance. Price already broke through the resistance. We've broken through the resistance on the one hour time frame. Look left. There's nothing. We're, we're above everything. What's holding it back from going to the high side? What's going back from hitting these wick areas, these wick range areas? Nothing. Follow momentum. This is why I love trading around the one hour and the four hour time frames because you can just get the best entries. Okay, once price is already confirmed, we're going through. Look at what it did. Boom, no drawdown. Scalp to swing. Scalp to swing. Higher time frames are always going to win, guys. The higher time frames are always going to win no matter what. They're always going to win. And when you understand higher highs and higher lows, eventually price is going to make confirm. Eventually. So like when I'm trading, um, it's possible to take losses in the day. I take losses sometimes. My losses are very minimal compared to what my gains are. But that's what a risk to reward is. But if, I'm, if, I, if I take a loss, I'm just going to be waiting for more confirmation. It's okay. Wait for more confirmation. Get back in. But this is where patience comes in. It has a lot to do with patience. If you're just waiting for those optimal times. This was through London last night. It just wouldn't stop going up. We already broke resistance. Here's look, What is it going to do? It's just going to the next zone, guys. These zones are determined from the four-hour time frame. Because nothing was holding it back. We look left, draw up a zone. Look left, draw up a zone. Look left, draw up a zone. These are your profit targets. These are your profit targets. We had a rally. Boom. I actually took screenshots. I have this. I didn't upload this stuff last night. I was too tired. I was on so many uh, webinars yesterday. I was just so exhausted to upload anything. But higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high. We're in a bullish trend. Follow the momentum. If the higher time frame is in a bullish trend, just keep moving with the higher time frame. It's just that simple, guys. It becomes simple. So, as I always say in conclusion, just uh, go ahead and reach out to me. Um, I pretty much know everybody that's in here. So, thank you guys for coming. I really enjoy helping you guys out a lot. Um, it, it's just it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for me. It, it gives me a purpose. You know, this is all I do. Um, two years ago, I got into a major car accident. I couldn't work my job anymore. I ended up becoming paralyzed. They said I would never be able to, to walk again. Well, I was uh, incomplete. I was not a complete. What that means is there's still a chance. So I had all feelings in my legs. I just couldn't move my legs. I never stopped trying. I never stopped working at it. And eventually, I was able to walk again. So I defeated what the doctor said I couldn't do. And I walked. But that, it didn't stop there. I, didn't, I wasn't able to work the same job that I could. So I just searched and I searched and I searched online and I found Forex and I didn't give up. I didn't give up. This is what I do. This is, this is my purpose is literally helping others. I love to help others. So this is why I spend my time with these webinars with you guys. This is why I started doing these webinars is because there's a lot of people that are just confused. So I'm going to continue to do these on a weekly basis to just kind of recap what I did, what I'm looking for, how I executed. And just many of you are from my Instagram, so you can, of course, stay updated with my entries. And then most of the webinars are going to be on my entries and what I looked for and how I did it. 
but a lot of people are making the same moves as me, students of mine, um, just people on Instagram. So I'm real proud of you guys. You guys are literally crushing it. it you guys are re really, really, really crushing it. I'm really proud of you guys. Um, just continue. Just don't give up. Like the one thing is just don't give up. I didn't give up. You know, there's a lot. Everybody's the reason why my mentorship is called OG FX is because it's called Our Generation FX. And the OG, I use the wheelchair as the G, and it kind of symbolizes the handicap for everybody. Everybody's got a handicap. Whether you come home and you sit your bum on the on the couch and you watch a, a television, whether you play video games too much, maybe may, whatever it is that you do too much that holds you back, that's a handicap. Don't let that handicap interfere with you achieving your goals. That's the most important thing. Make a trading plan. You have to have a goal when trading, right? OGFX, we're all about making trading plans. We're all about not allowing our handicaps to hold us back and just to keep moving forward. For me, it was a wheelchair. For me, they said I would never walk again, and I'm in a wheelchair. I walk. I'm not only in a wheelchair. I can't run, but I can walk. It's better than nothing. I don't walk nicely. I, I walk a little worse than a penguin does, but I can still walk. That's a big deal for me, guys. So I know a lot of you have things that you struggle with too. Don't allow these things to hold you back. Just keep moving forward. Keep asking questions and keep practicing. Practice makes perfect in the forex markets. Baby juices. Have a good have a good week weekend too. Um, I'm really I'm just really proud of you guys. Thanks for coming. Um, send me a private message either on Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, if you got me on WhatsApp, whatever, and I'll be able to further um, go with you guys. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to close this webinar down. I'm going to upload it online so you guys can go ahead and review it and watch it again if you wish. Um, but anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you guys came. So thanks for being thanks for being a part of this, guys. Oh, Wally. Thank you, brother. Thank you for coming. Daryl, of course, positive vibes only, brother. There's no room for negativity. All right, guys, I'm going to close down. Thank you so much for coming.